Hello! I already make a video about how to repair non-working buttons on remote control. In that video I'll show process of cleaning the pads. But what about when cleaning doesn't help anymore? In this video I'll show you how to fix remote control to work just like new again by replacing the button pads. Here I got another two remotes. I already tried to clean the pads, but it only worked for a few days, so I will try to replace the pads in it. First of all, make a test which button don't work. In my case it's a power button, which also got an LED indicator, so I instantly know if button work or not. Actually the button work if I push really hard and hold it for a second or two. Now disassemble the remote. I can't tell you how, because every remote got its own way to disassemble. Try to figure it out and be gentle to not broke the housing. And that's what we got. Dirty rubber buttons with dirty pads behind. And a circuit board. Just in case someone don't know how remote control works. Here on circuit we got two lines on every button position. And when we push the button its pads make contact between the lines and so the microcontroller know which button we pressed. And then sends signal to infrared diode. By the code of infrared flashing TV know what it need to do. Most common phase so the button don't work is bad contact between the lines on circuit and button pads. Surface of the lines is coated with conductive material, same as button pads. Sometimes we can return the conductive by just cleaning them with alcohol, but sometimes it's just worn out. The resistance can be checked with any multimeter, so let's check them. Ok, here we can see that the circuit board is ok, because the resistance of coating is below 100 ohms, somewhere even below 10 ohms, which is great. What about button pads? If I measure resistance of working buttons, it's only about 2 kilo ohm or even less. But when I measure the non-working pads, its resistance is between 100 and 500 kilo ohms, which is way too much to make good contact. If I measure new pad, it got below 100 ohms, which is great. What I do next is to replace the pads, which is actually just printed on buttons, so they can wear out and lose their conductivity. I buy that kit of button pads on eBay. We can buy just one dimension, but I'm a guy who fixed some stuff here and there, so I take entire kit of different dimension storage into box for about 10 bucks, and I'm sure I got enough of them for my entire life. This button is a bit different because of LED in the middle, so the pad is split in two parts. The diameter of the pad on this button is about 5 mm, so I take 5 mm replacing pad, which is about 0.4 mm thick. What I do next is to cut about 0.4 mm of material from the button and then glue new pad on its position. I tried to use rubber glue, but it didn't stick to K-pad material, which looked like some kind of silicone. So using CA glue was the right choice. Meanwhile the glue is hardening, I clean every other part with rotary plastic brush and then wipe it with alcohol. When the glue is dry I can cut away the middle part of pad to make space for the LED. By the way, this pad's cut like butter. Now I can assemble the remote and make a test. Yep, button work better like ever before. Here I got another remote controller, few unworking buttons. To test which one doesn't work, we can use camera which can see the flashing of infrared diode. After I open the controller I can instantly see a lot of dirts and liquids on pads. So first of all clean all together with brush and wipe with alcohol. After cleaning buttons work a bit better, but I decided to replace the pads on three critical buttons. 
So again, cut the old pad away and glue a new one on its position, using cyanocol glue. Then I replace also the program button pads, which is a bit different shape. So I use bigger round pad and cut it to shape I need. Glue to its position and assemble the remote. And voila! All the buttons work like new again, maybe even better. I will see how long the pads will work, but it seems much better than the original one, which is just printed layer on the button surface. That's about it for today. Entire repair won't take us more than 15 minutes, and totally worth it instead of frustrating over non-working buttons. Thanks for watching, like, share and subscribe if you like, and see you next time.